welcome back again so as uh, i told you in the first session uh, i'd like to show you the plants which are mentioned in our uh, uh, course material as top 10 plants and some plants has been suggested like the important plants okay so this is the salix plant Okay, so as I told you, you know, Egyptian people uh, used to chew the bark of this plant to get relief from headache and uh, fevers like, like that. So this is a uh, plant uh, which is used and later on uh, found that it consists of salicylic acid which is the basis for the making of uh, aspirin. Okay, this is the cannabinous plant. Ganjai Mokandra, cannabinous plant, it uh, almost looks like uh, our uh, hibiscus cannabinous, Gongura. But the uh, poles are, I mean, uh, of course, it is also palmately low per leaf, uh, but the, the margins are different and even the influence, everything we can make out. So, crowding of the smaller leaves and the flowers, so this part is not the just leaves, so the inflorescence part, the shoot part is much used uh, to extract the Okay, the, 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 this leaf is only used as a narcotic substance, ganjai leaf under that, so that is marijuana or ganjai. So that is, this is the cannabinous leaf. Of course, it is used as a, a painkiller or a sedative substance. And uh, okay, so this is the taxis plant, which is also mentioned in our syllabus. As an important plant of medicine so this is uh, the daffodil okay so one of the beautiful flower i believe uh, like it is an liliaceae member so as it has um, the perianth is such that it will be something like a cup like and uh, the petals are okay the flowers are um, in different colors as well so here the bulb is the source of the drug which we are using for the alzheimer's disease And this is the Atropa belladonna, that is a deadly nightshade, uh, which I told you is used to treat the disease of uh, encephalitis, it is brain fever, and also used to treat dengue fever and all. Okay, this is the opium. Opium poppy, I told you, no, opium poppy or Pepaver somniferum belong to the family Pepaver AC. So, this is actually this is the fruit as i told you the fruit uh, is uh, the source for our cuscus or gasgasalo the seeds are highly prote proteinaceous uh, not having any kind of the traces of narcotic substance are also not to be found uh, but it is told that uh, excess amount of use of uh, cuscus also may cause little drowsiness kind of thing uh, but uh, the tender fruit will be yielding this kind of latex will be extracted so they just give the incision uh, and try to extract these are normally as all of us know and uh, many of you must have seen uh, when you just either it is a wound or any cut or happened uh, in certain plants we observe the woozing of some substance and that might be just a hardening substance in a, uh, sometimes and in certain cases that will be having more amount of gum so either it is a ta neem or tamarind or acacia even moringa we observe a lot of uh, exudate in the form of gum like okay so all these exudates are when they are coming out we call them as uh, tears so here this uh, latex is uh, extracted and uh, that will be pressed and made the source for the opium that is uh, the crude form is opium but uh, the morphine is the main uh, product derived from this and uh, a slightly altered form of the morphine is called heroin that is a brown sugar uh, which got lot of uh, um, yeah internationally it has a high valued substance not in a positive way okay so they are uh, highly potent narcotic substances and uh, okay so as a uh, few things i we told you know like uh, the prehistoric medicine i told you it is uh, somewhat like uh, uh, magical religious like 
okay so this is just the model as been shown like a shamanism which is practiced in rome or greece so they just uh, uh, wear the some mythological character uh, masks makut as we call so they put mask and uh, they try to perform some certain rituals the uh, giving uh, some fumes and all but they also give uh, drugs unlike the witchcraft okay this is also kind of witchcraft so um, like following certain uh, rituals only nothing uh, really they do they give any medicine so this is what actually in the middle east in the arabian countries i told you know bloodletting is one practice they used to follow as uh, the belief of the disease was uh, something like it is a uh, been uh, accumulation of the bad blood is causing the ill health so by letting bleeding by allowing the to bleed uh, that that's how they try to cure the disease okay so that is one crude method they followed okay sometimes so this is what i told you the trepanation of the skull so this is how they used to put the holes to the skull uh, thinking that the evil spirit will be uh, just uh, expelled through that holes created in the skull so that kind of trepanated skulls are much found in excavations in uh, england and also in canada so i always wonder like uh, other uh, magico relays things are not that harmful so really how many people have survived after this treatment uh, so that kind of uh, things are there in uh, different civilizations okay this is about the herbal medicine wise just uh, as to suggest like the first medicines to the human beings are the herbs that is the hello madam thing. హెర్బల్ మెడిసిన్ థింగ్స్ సమ్ ఆఫ్ దిక్చర్స్ జస్ట్ యూ కెన్ లుక్ ఇన్ టు టు యాడ్ లిటిల్ బిట్ క్లారిటీ అబౌట్ ద థింగ్స్ ఓకే హీ ఈస్ this is a picture of charaka so he formulated has given several formulations nearly 700 formulations he has given for the different diseases and even he could give the uh, symptoms for certain diseases also very clearly so that's why we consider charaka samhita and also sushita samhita are the main pillars of ayurveda system of medicine and this is the sushita samhita if you browse about the sushita Uh, he was the first surgeon at least in the indian context is concerned he was the first surgeon and also more specifically a plastic surgeon as well so that is the beauty of the human uh, knowledge we can really need to appreciate at that point of time uh, no knowledge of anatomy and no and even i really wonder what kind of equipment they have used it is the plastic surgery uh, picture because there is no anesthesia at that time right so some sedatives like opium must have given but no real uh, tranquilizer or sedative when they got operated but the kind of operation they made it is actually told that he is to um, correct the nose and the um, other things as well but because we can understood like a uh, lot of wars uh, are uh, going on in those days so many people might have lost their limbs and uh, other cuts and all might have happened uh, to their face as well that's how the plastic surgery might have entered um, in practice and uh, other than that it is also mentioned that he could uh, I mean he performed the surgeries of cataract gall bladder stone removal and urinary blood uh, urinary bladder stones removal so that that sounds very amazing and uh, even he suggested nearly 100 different types of uh, uh, tools need to be required for the surgery so that is really a, a kind of marvelous uh, thing uh, we can um, appreciate about the ancient systems of medicine this is how like the in ayurveda like uh, how the energy levels has been um, been uh, uh, be there in the body 
this is also like uh, in the yoga they follow no so in the the, the a specific posture will give a kind of strength to the body and uh, also making the different uh, energy points in a particular manner uh, will boost the um, immunity system also will strengthen the body that is uh, actually been suggested in yoga also part of ayurveda and yoga kind of thing so this is the kind of uh, mud bath as i told you in the naturopathy system of medicine they'll give a lot of uh, mud bath and steam baths and all to uh, give relief to the body and also a kind of detoxification through the uh, food diet and all also they follow yeah so this is the main picture at least uh, you can remember about ayurveda system of medicine to understand the concept i told you like the concept of the ayurveda system of medicine is based on the these are the five components right so water earth ether that is the sky air and fire so these are the panchabhutas according to them is constituting the body that uh, and uh, the main components of the any living body is vata pitta and kapha so these are the tridoshas and this is the combination of the uh, the constituents of your body like and even uh, it is something like all these uh, five elements of nature how they are cohesively acting on the tridoshas is something like it is related to something like a transformation and cohesion of all the elements and the kind of cold the temperature wise as it is also related to the fire and movement of all these components in the body and the light so these are the required things in nature are uh, from nature the transformation of the components and their cohesion and their temperatures as well and the movement of these components and the light of course ultimately light is the energy source uh, to all the life forms on earth so that's what usually i present in a way like whatever the beliefs we have what are the kind of faith we have the life thing we can always believe sun as the ultimate source of energy so without sun nothing exists on earth no plants will survive right as a botany student at least we can uh, definitely can understand better so when the sunlight is there then only the photosynthesis will be carried out and through photosynthesis only oxygen is released that so all the life forms actually sustain on earth so uh, first uh, we need to have oxygen to breathe then we think about food and water and of course water then food right so the water is also from the oxygen only it is going to become make the water h2o right and then of course food so everything is related to uh, sun and as the photosynthesis also we explain that it is uh, something like uh, the transformation of radiation energy into chemical energy so whatever the energy exists on earth is directly or indirectly derived from sun only so ultimate god whatever the faiths we have is sun as we experience the role of uh, sun in our day to day life all through right okay so this is about the concept of uh, siddha system of, sorry unani system of medicine as i told you it is based on four humor theory right it is the uh, as they suggested like a felgum it is in the form of water or liquid then it is the earth the solid that is the black bile the dry form and uh, the fire that is the plasma which is in the form of yellow bile and it is the blood uh, the gaseous form which is indicating the heart condition so here it is the uh, yellow bile and black bile and uh, the blood and the felgum are constituting the four humors so the balance in the four humors is the healthy condition any imbalance is ill health that is the concept of the uh, unani system of medicine and this is Uh, a little bit about uh, inani system of medicine as i told you it is also proposed by hippocrates but later on it when it reached to the middle east all rages uh, 
uh, was the first uh, physician followed the Siddha system of medicine are practiced and developed there and uh, this is the person Avicenna as a botany student we know a plant called Avicenia is it not Avicenia is a mangrove plant okay so that plant name is given after him Avicenna uh, Avicen Siba is the name so in Arabic that is uh, commonly called as Avicenna he, he was a child prodigy so you can just browse once he was uh, such an uh, like uh, unusual personality like he is an expert in several fields of course uh, he is uh, good in medicine he was a doctor for several uh, four princes it seems four kings in fact uh, and also he was an uh, chemist and also an um, um, astrologer, astrologer and also a painter so several he was a, an eminent personality in several fields of course a religious personality as well so he, he was Avicenna was the first to describe meningitis okay then also the incubation procedure surgical procedure to fill state breathing like artificial like cutting the neck here so sometimes if it is required so uh, that artificial breathing mechanism also he has introduced actually the um, unani system of medicine contributed a lot to the medicine development of medicine they have uh, developed more uh, surgical things initially they were against of surgery but later on they added several uh, uh, alcohol and uh, the sulfuric acid and HCl has been developed there only and the uh, antiseptic conditions to the <coughs> sterilization of the equipment and antiseptic conditions in the uh, surgical time and all has been uh, proposed by the um, United system of medicine in fact. So that's what so Avicenna was the first to describe meningitis and also the uh, surgical procedures uh, also been suggested then the contamination of the body by foreign bodies prior to infection like uh, tuberculosis has been uh, a communicable disease also been uh, observed by him and uh, he also suggested surgical treatment for cancer at that time itself then uh, allergy as I told allergy was the first to describe smallpox and measles and the uh, Arab surgeons Al Jahari was the first to describe hemophilia and also the first surgeon in history to use cotton okay so those are everything is uh, a milestone to develop a field of uh, subject okay so he was the theophrastus sorry hypocrites and uh, this was the way actually the hypocrites used to observe the uh, symptoms, diagnosis method, how it need to be observation. Of course, a remake of the things, of, uh, definitely not the old one. So, he was a person called Galen. Uh, he introduced several minerals and also opium as a sedative or a painkiller like in medicine. And he was, interestingly, he was a, a business person and uh, he uh, traded different types of chemicals because of his inquisitiveness in medicine or uh, he tried to use certain uh, chemical substances also in the treatment of disease uh, that's why um, even today also in in, uh, in UK uh, as uh, we observe the signboards of our uh, pharmacy like uh, druggists and uh, chemist that kind of boards are still there right so whatever the name they have they will also write that that is druggists and chem chemists. So, but uh, in uh, United uh, Kingdom, they just write it as Galenicals. Uh, and his name still, they are continuing that uh, name as Galenicals as a pharmaceuticals. And this is a kind of uh, Avicenna, how he used to do the diagnosis, observation of the patient. Uh, eye observation also pulse observation like that so the Avicenna has written a very important book it is called canon of medicine so the this book has been translated in all the languages actually considered to be the basis for the uh, allopathy medicinal uh, system 
the literature wise i am talking about not the concepts and all but the information he has provided in this canon of medicine has been taken the foundation for the uh, allopathy literature okay so this is uh, so, uh, as in arabic i told you know arabian sina that is avicenna the period of uh, his time was from 980 to 10 um, 1037 ad Okay, this is about the Siddha system of medicine. So this is roughly considered to be ten thousand years old traditional system of medicine. That's what I told you. It is much older than the Ayurveda system of medicine. So this is so all these things I already mentioned. Like this is written in Tamil language and all. Okay, so a little bit of uh, few more things will uh, quickly finish these slides and all. Okay, in the Siddha system of it is largely therapeutic in nature, so it is going to treat. And use of metals and minerals is very much advocated. Um, okay, so some kinds of um, metals, a kind of thing. In fact, like they also use mercury, arsenic, also in the treatment. So that's where actually the um, problem lies. Uh, according to them. they are completely burnt and uh, bhasma as they call that that will be added in the drug preparation uh, so in the process as they make the drug it loses its uh, poisonous uh, character that's what they claim but actually the patients or the people who are uh, following the system of medicine siddha system or medicine even in ayurveda nowadays are uh, ending the time like uh, some with uh, kidney problems often as many of the doctors has been uh, told that that's what actually happening even in uh, kerala also as this is much practiced in kerala state uh, very much traditionally many people follow so the people are ending having some kidney problems not all the time i am not saying like that but uh, here uh, wherever they are used metals are going to affect the kidneys because ultimately whatever we take whatever the food or whatever the medicine we take ultimately it, it need to be filtered through kidneys so first it is need to be digested means it will be affecting the liver first then ultimately as they filter the filters of the body as kidneys they are going to be affected so anything whatever we use either uh, nutraceuticals or medicine whatever they affect the liver first and the kidneys last and kidneys are the most affected so here as um, that is one observation not uh, to be uh, as a negative thing i am not uh, presenting this but because they use lot of metals and uh, particular metals and minerals also it is one observation because they are not going to use metals in all the treatments also so uh, like that there are uh, 25 varieties of water soluble inorganic compounds called uppu lavanam so there are different names are also there in that because uh, as uh, 64 varieties of mineral drugs are also been used just few things quickly will go on Okay, so this is uh, the Siddha system of medicine is one of the ancient system of medicine in India, having its close uh, bond with the Dravidian culture. And the term Siddha means achievements. All uh, so yeah, the Siddha system of medicine emphasizes on the patient, environment, age, sex, race, habits, mental framework, habit at uh, diet, appetite, physical condition, physiological condition, constitution of the disease. I mean, the physiological constitution. and that this is for its treatment which is individualistic in nature so more than this i would like to add here all the traditional systems of medicine in fact uh, one thing we already mentioned that um, they are all uh, mostly we using the herbal drugs or some minerals or animal source as well but never isolate any thing specifically the whole plant part which are is used used in the drug preparation that's why one thing i told it is not a, again uh, treating the disease by killing some microorganisms here to strengthen the immunity system of the body so that 
that natural built in system will work effectively that is the main uh, thing in all the traditional systems of medicine as he here in the siddha uh, context as uh, here it has been mentioned no all the things are been taken into consideration that is every aspect of the patient so like uh, whether it is the people are having the family history or in what, what time they are getting that means in what season they are getting that problem and what is their basic nature also their temperament whether they are very cool person or uh, really little bit of uh, short temper about that nature wise psych psychological also they take they take into consideration and uh, what kind of food they take regularly okay so that means it is uh, a holistic approach not just the disease okay this disease will have these symptoms so by observing the diagnosis of the disease with the symptoms as uh, been identified then the treatment will be given in allopathy system of medicine but in all the traditional systems of medicine so many factors will be taken into consideration okay as has been shown here not this is not only in siddha system of medicine in all the traditional systems that is the regular practice they follow so that's why they are also called as holistic uh, approach it is called a holistic approach and in the recent times the allopathy medicine has also been able to realize its significance that's why um, the recent times in many allopathy hospitals also we observe a dietitian and a nutritionist and also a counselor right so what the what is that disease and how to um, follow the treatment and all protocol and how to maintain our uh, confidence levels so psychologically also they give a counseling so what kind of uh, problem it is how much of time it is going to take and how to handle so the patients and patient families are also been counseled that is uh, one trend has been uh, developed in the allopathy system of medicine also some of you must have experienced this right and similarly they are also giving uh, diet uh, advice are also they are providing and also nutritional so there is a new dietitian nutritionist and the counselor which were not there earlier in the allopathy system of medicine so that means they have understood the importance of holistic approach not just by observing um, after doing the diagnosis giving the treatment and forgetting but here they are also been um, taking the positive aspect of this traditional system of medicine as a holistic approach like they are also added that part in their system, in their uh, treatment methodology so this is a place just to have an idea like that i told you know vaigai river points uh, the siddha system of medicine has been uh, developed just to have an idea this is uh, just the place between uh, states of the kerala and uh, tamil nadu and this is a place where i told the books written the not books actually the pamira leaf scriptures of uh, the siddha system of medicine has been uh, preserved here this is the saraswati mahal museum at mysore where this uh, scriptures of siddha medicine has been preserved okay apo this is our famous linnaeus or the taxonomist okay these are the principles of the siddha system of medicine just to have um, so this is a present uh, scenario the ayurveda system is popular mostly in the states of kerala Hima so actually this is originated in north india but much uh, developed and uh, practiced in kerala state but some of the northern states still follow like himachal pradesh and gujarat and of course these are the few states the ayurveda system of medicine is more popular then siddha system is widely acceptable in tamil nadu but again the kerala state is uh, still uh, um, preserved this system of medicine and practiced so 
actually a combination of ayurveda and siddha systems are going on as a practice in kerala ayurveda or kerala vaidyashala like uh, is a popular uh, ayurveda vaidyashala is there at coimbatore and in kerala so those are practicing a mix of ayurveda and siddha systems because they do kayakalpa chikitsa part of siddha system and the drug preparations are somewhat um, of completely of ayurveda system they follow okay so that is mostly the states of tamil nadu kerala and also telugu states are following a little bit of uh, telugu states not much but mainly tamil nadu kerala and karnataka then the unani system is uh, particularly popular in andhra pradesh because i already told it is uh, during the mogal time it was uh, many hospitals were there around uh, delhi but because the nizam has patronized this uh, unani system of medicine and uh, at least around hyderabad as you can see here andhra pradesh means it is a telangana region and karnataka particularly the telangana karnataka like bidar and gulbarga regions where they are once they are ruled by nizam uh, people no nizam uh, under nizam rule so that uh, it is uh, in andhra pradesh and karnataka and tamil nadu and bihar also it is practiced in any system of medicine homeopathy for, but particularly i told it is in west bengal of course it is practice uh, many homeo doctors were there even we do have a very big homeo college at ramantapur uh, so this is much practiced in the state of uttar pradesh kerala west bengal even in andhra pradesh just as a kind of divinity the picture has been shown like siddha siddhars how they are like as i told you know like they are the attainers of all the kind of knowledge like that's how the picture has been depicted like and this is just uh, to have an idea as i told you there are 18 siddhars the each one is called as siddhar so there are 18 siddhars as the founders of siddha system of medicine so few names if you can remember you can write no need of remembering all the 18 names so nandi agastyar tirumalar kunakasir kulasthiyar punankira so okay these are all uh, tamil uh, names so bogar karuvayur and karvanar kalangi um, yeah, agappal ambattu teriyalar and kudambanambi that was the 18th uh, um, siddhar was the kudambai so these are 18 siddhars just give the name and uh, if you can write a few names that is fine no issue no need of writing remembering all the 18 names also so this is how like a siddhi how uh, ultimate uh, attainment like uh, just uh, to know if anything we can add the uh, like uh, as we heard a lot of um, things about the sages who just uh, make a pinnace like the continuous years together they just uh, in the yoga posture like that so sometimes sometimes it's a belief definitely uh, but uh, in the siddha system of medicine they claim some of the siddhars have lived more than 300 years that's how they say like in their uh, pos- the posture of that yoga posture they can they lived without uh, food and all just by breathing itself even sometimes they stop breathing as well it is also one kind of practice in yoga okay so this is the a famous siddha was tirumalar who was a tamil mystic and writer of 6th century ad and was also one of the 18th siddhas according to the tamil siddha tradition his main work is named tirumattram of 3000 words tirumantiram a 3000 words text which is the foundation of the southern uh, shiva siddha uh, siddha the school of philosophy so another siddha bogar who lived between the 3rd and 5th century ad is said to have discovered the elixir of immortality uh, and his uh, one of his main works is the pharmacognosy i told you know so some of the people has uh, lived for several centuries according to the literature of the siddha system of medicine and uh, okay so i just uh, yeah wrongly place it this this is how uh, charaka performed the surgery cataract surgery really uh, astonishing even uh, now also we hear some of the 
things happen so go wrong in uh, cataract surgery even though it's a very simple surgery sometimes it goes wrong and people uh, lose their sight also that kind of uh, incidents are there but here in those days itself like how they perform the surgeries really it's a, a remarkable thing i think this is the last like this Yeah. just this is these are some some information i'd like to show you as a visually if you have seen something uh, you will be able to remember not really to add uh, something to the subject but what all told uh, in words you will be able to remember okay then we are moving on uh, to the second unit that is uh, general account of phytochemical uh, of uh, medicinal plants okay i hope all of you are uh, having your uh, books with you yes ma'am yeah that's how you will be able to note down the important uh, points when i am referring with and also you will be able to note down the important uh, essay and chart questions which you will be getting in your exam so this is uh, actually uh, more related to the chemistry in, in fact as uh, the, but always we are going to get uh one essay question and short question from this unit as um, phytochemicals is one thing mostly they are asking so as uh, so far we discussed about the plant uh, i mean the different traditional systems of medicine so far okay so in every system of medicine i told uh, it is uh, mostly the plants are used either in single or in a com mostly in combination of uh, the forms they are used uh, different uh, ways they are made uh, like in the form of powder extracts all these things uh, i told and in the last as i told that is the concept of all the traditional systems that the when the plant products are used product means plant parts are used that plant part complete it has been used not Uh, separating the substances the chemical substances what they have is not been isolated and as it is they have been used that is the thing i have repeatedly mentioned because that is the concept of in all the traditional systems of medicine but when we are looking into to understand how important the plants are in medicine and for what reason they are used to treat a particular disease we need to confirm okay it's not just okay these plants are used in medicine we can study like that but as we the science progresses we want to know what exactly that particular plant has and once that chemical substance been been studied uh, identified then we will know what is its structure and uh, what is its uh, activity as a chemical substance like what is its uh, like um, the nature of that substance we will know right then definitely that will be a better kind of uh, drug preparation what exactly it contains and how we tax and how much can be added like it does right so that's how we'll be knowing about the chemical substances present in the plants is an important uh, aspect now not just what plants but what exactly it contains and what is its character and how it can how it acts on the what activity it will have okay all these things we are supposed to know that's that's why it is uh, added here as the phytochemicals account of phytochemistry of medicinal plants so uh, if you can recall something about the subject you have studied in your uh, first year in taxonomy you have mentioned one uh, Uh, as uh, aspect of uh, study called recent trends in taxonomy in that we also studied chemo taxonomy do you remember this word chemo taxonomy yes ma'am yeah that is that means the chemical substances which are uh, present in particular plants will be helpful in the taxonomic studies if they are very specific so that's what actually we call it as a chemo taxonomy and now it is the same thing we are taking into consideration now and being it is, this is related to our the study of medicinal plants and uh, related to the medicine uh, drugs uh, more particularly so now these are called as phyto 
chemicals and the study of phytochemicals will be phytochemistry chemistry we know the study of chemicals so as uh, basic subjects like all of us know it is organic chemistry inorganic chemistry and physical chemistry right of course it is organic chemistry related to the plants or carbon compounds okay so here the chemical substances of the plants as we study it is called phytochemistry and the substances found in the plants can be called as phytochemicals so there will be different types of phytochemicals so plants means a combination of different so apart from the major component being the water nearly 70% of all the cells will have water but next will be it is the carbon hydrogen and oxygen and all okay so all these things are going to make different uh, substances like uh, carbohydrates proteins amino okay let me say it amino acids and proteins and the uh, different substances later on can be uh, they can be enzymes as well right and also sometimes it can be some tannins or resins or gums or any kind of um, alkaloids or steroids or glycosides so these are all different substances we will find in plants right so a whole sum of these substances we can call it as phytochemicals yes so here one thing we need to observe not a whole thing like just like that we can categorize the substances as macromolecules and micromolecules like okay so they are also uh, very interestingly it is given like the macromolecules are dna rna and proteins so in certain way they are also called as uh, cementides as well okay in the taxonomy that's how we uh, mention them as cementides so the primary cementide secondary and tertiary like so it is the nucleic acids here as just because of their molecular weight is so much they are called as macromolecules even the structure wise also they are very big molecules um, right so they are the macromolecules are dna and rna and proteins as well and the micromolecules can be of different uh, substances apart from this dna the macromolecules others will be considering as just like uh, micromolecules so this micromolecules are um, again we can categorize into as in the page uh, 21 okay page 21 you have we have a brief account of how the substances found in the plants can be categorized you just see the headings of primary metabolites secondary metabolites and miscellaneous compounds okay it is the substances apart from the macromolecules of uh, uh, mainly as a dna and rna leaving aside because they are all genetical substances in a way okay the remaining substances generally we can distinguish as primary metabolites secondary metabolites and miscellaneous so the primary metabolites are the substances which are universal in distribution they are present in all the plants from the beginning of the plant growth or that means from the beginning of their life as the seed starts germination so from seedling stage to the end of the plant uh, they will be there and uh, as the word also indicating they are responsible for the metabolism we know there are different metabolic pathways right so the metabolic pathways such as photosynthesis respiration protein synthesis all these are all called metabolic pathways so just uh, to consider something like a living cell means a cell to be considered as it's a living one so as long as these metabolic processes are happening then only we consider that as a cell living cell right so the as the the substances which are involved in this metabolic pathways are called as primary metabolites so as uh, i told you from the beginning life starts from there to end so till then all these substances will be there so that's the reason they'll be common in all the plants with slight variation 
so let us say like the glucose or the fructose are the different proteins are the enzymes which are involved in the photosynthesis respiration and protein synthesis all will be common in all the plants where this metabolic process are going on okay so one thing is i told they are involved the primary metabolites are involved in the metabolic pathways from the beginning and these substances are never get accumulated means they always recycled as some of the names we can recall like calvin cycle krebs cycle right except the glycol cycle which is a straight one in the respiration it is a krebs cycle that means it is in the form of a cycle like so the end product will regenerate and again it starts okay even in the calvin cycle in the photosynthesis after the carbon assimilation it is the process of converting into glucose it happens in the form of a cycle it's a calvin cycle ppp pathway as we call okay so all these things are happened in a cycle manner that means we can easily can understand they are all recycled never any substance is not get accumulated they always change one form to the other and then always recycle okay so that's the main thing you can understand from the primary metabolites they are involved in the primary metabolic all the metabolic pathways they will be there from the beginning of the plant body in from the primary structure and they never get accumulated they are universal in distribution and they will be common in all the plants that is the characteristic feature of primary metabolites then we are moving to secondary metabolites so the secondary metabolites are the substances generated in the process of primary metabolic pathways they are end products of certain pathways right they are never recycled so because they are never recycled there is a then uh, chance of accumulation right if they are recycled so it is not going to be there uh, for a longer time it is not going to be stored it will be changed to another form that's what actually happens with the primary metabolite so here the secondary metabolites are the generated in the process of in the process of yeah, the byproduct actually pardon pravin pravin uh, they are actually the byproducts madam yes. Yeah, yeah. Secondary so, metabolites are nothing but the yeah. by byproducts yes. that they, they are, are generated are... in the metabolic pathways, and they are never recycled. And as they are not recycled, they get naturally they get accumulated. Okay, so that is a important thing you need to remember. And uh, they are also not present from the beginning because they are as. parvin told they are not by products or end products like they are generated in the process of the metabolic pathways they get uh, gen they generated but they are because they are not recycled they get accumulated and they are not from the beginning so after a certain stage of the plant life they been generated okay so they are never recycled and they get accumulated and another important thing is they are very unique to certain species because with the different uh, combination of the things happens in a particular plant species they are generated that means the secondary metabolites are not common in all the plants they are unique they are very diversified the secondary met metabolites are very diversified and they are found in diversified species so it's not like these all all the second metabolites are found in certain plants so the some of the substances are found in certain plants so which is very characteristic so here that's what actually we used the term like chemo taxonomy in the taxonomic uh, consideration that means here the certain chemical substances are very specific to certain species or certain genera or certain families right so that's how they are useful in the taxonomic studies and here as we are observing the chemical substances in particular so primary metabolites are not going to be useful 
as the medicinal substances okay the secondary metabolites are the substances which are will be useful as the medicinal substances because they have certain specific properties so the kind of substances we are getting from medicinal plants such as alkaloids or steroids or glycosides or tannins or resins or gums they are very specific to certain species of a genera or sometimes certain genera will have like that certain families also will have so that is the importance of secondary metabolites so the phytochemicals of our consideration will be of mainly secondary metabolites okay so they are very uh, these are known for their stability so that's what you are uh, so just go through once after the, in the evening whenever you find time go through once and try to underline the points which you think are very important then that will help you when you are doing the preparation at the time of exam okay so here the thing which is mentioned the secondary metabolites are different things are just mentioned here they can be phenolic compounds steroids alkaloids the different things and the main thing about the um, character of these substances has been mentioned as they are very stable they are known for their stability diversity and ubiquity okay so that's where the significance of this phytochemical secondary metabolites are then miscellaneous substances like there can be some gums and resins of our ergastic substances like uh, in the form of calcium oxalate crystals or something like that okay so they may not be that much useful so here our priority of the study is about secondary metabolites okay so list of the things we have just identified as primary metabolites secondary metabolites and miscellaneous out of which yeah nirosha you would like to do you have any doubt nirosha okay so uh, this uh, out of the different types of chemical substances mainly the secondary metabolites are more diversified so the importance of these secondary metabolites is also mentioned as they have structural variability among the chemical constants and they are very much chemically they are stable chemical stability easy and rapid identification this is phytochemical sub secondary metabolite nature have need to have these kind of characters their variability need to be very much distinct chemically then uh, their stability is also an important thing and uh, easy way of rap and identification identification also need to be uh, very easy when it will be easy if they are very characteristic and unique then we can easily can identify that is the characters are mentioned here then classification of crude drugs based on phytochemicals is one heading you have in page 22 so here many of the plants has been mentioned based on the type of chemicals what they have okay so the list of chemical compounds and the taxonomy groups has been given here just see once glycosides that is a type of substance been given the first one glycosides here it is the distalis in the first itself we have mentioned this distalis purpurea which is uh, used to regulate the heartbeat and all now also it is a cardio glycoside used in the treatment of uh, different cardiac problems as well and another one is senna senna angustifolia we are going to study as an important medicinal plant this is also in telugu it is called sonamukhi a laxative plant but uh, the chemically it will have a glycoside senoside it is called but a characteristic of glycosides it will have then uh, the other is uh, alkaloid the second category of the chemical substance is given as an alkaloid so it's a nitrogenous compound organic nitrogenous compounds are alkaloids so here the examples are given like strychnas nexovamica uh, the active the substance uh, responsible for its uh, medicinal properties called strychnin uh, musidi chet antaru visham musti or musidi kail antaru it is it's a very important uh, traditional medicinal plant used in ayurveda and siddha strychnas nexovamica very poisonous uh, plant in fact seeds are used 
and mainly the tribal people use these uh, seeds as arrow poison to kill the birds and all but it is used to treat different uh, nervous disorders strychnine is the component there uh, strychnas nakswamika and uh, another plant is a uh, dioscoria dioscoria floribunda that is uh, ams kanda antaru kada kanda that is something like uh, very close to our colocasia chamagaddal lantive it is the uh, family uh, eresi family eresi family eroids colocasia untundi kada colocasia family okay. yeah yams and are generally the, the kind of tubers they have uh, of a typical shapes and all okay that is one uh, dioscoria one of the endangered plant of india and also much uh, war exploited plant also along with rawulfia so it is disogenin is uh, one substance extracted from this plant is used to make uh, contraceptives uh, then uh, nicotiana tobacco so just these are examples of plants given having the alkaloid type of drug at least you can remember these names as uh, they are having alkaloid uh, substances in their plant and then tannin salts another category here the example is given i like uh, ashoka that <clears throat> pirmnelia ashoka and tellamadhi antaru the bark of this uh, pirmnelia ashoka is much used as it uh, of course it has lot of tannins uh, it is used to treat the cardiac problems particularly any uh, artery blocks can be cured it seems very effectively um, so that is uh, then myrobalan myrobalan is behera uh, they call no like uh, ternelia um, this karakka antam ternelia chebula it is much used to treat uh, cough and all particularly in this covid time it is also one of, yeah okay one of the ingredient in, in the making of uh, uh, trifala churna and also this is uh, with amla and it is uh, been used to make uh, trifala churna or trifala um, preparation of ayurveda that is myrobalan and the lipids are also kind of yeah parvin to treat to treat the cough in children infants and children yeah, not just infants anyone can use this ternelia chebula karakkaya is a very effective uh, uh, fruit just you can choose just like the nut powder so the dry cough and uh, different kinds of cough can be cured and it is also good for uh, mouth ulcers and good for digestion and even it will uh, strengthen the teeth also so it's uh, regularly you can uh, have this little bit bitter to taste just like amla fruit one of the ingredient in the chavan crash and also trifala churna like okay that is uh, about myrobalan and the uh, lipids are also castor oil and uh, other things. so lipids are fats like thing and there are also volatile oils category like eucalyptus and clove oil and garlic can be added here and there are resins as well uh, with the balsam and calophony then vitamins and all just uh, here the consideration is that what kind of uh, chemical substance it is and uh, what are the source of the plant that is a list has been given so here the another category is of phytochemicals or chemical compounds of the plant origin so how they are been used uh, so uh, mainly the different uh, here uh, different uh, types of chemical substances are been derived from through two metabolic pathways so here uh, the important pathways usually we'll study about uh, uh, photosynthesis respiration protein synthesis and all but when we study the amino acid synthesis there are two important pathways has been there one is the stickmic acid pathway and another one is mevalonic acid pathway in the biochemistry or physiology part you might be getting these uh, Uh, cycles are at least some introduction of these uh, aspects so one is at least remember one is stickmic acid pathway these are two pathways are been uh, identified uh, to develop different types of amino acids one is stickmic acid pathway in the page 25 we have the flow chart of the stickmic acid pathway 
just to know that what are the different types of secondary metabolites has been derived or uh, as a byproduct of in this process of the shikmic acid pathway what are the different byproducts we are getting so in this uh, page 25 you will be able to know different secondary metabolites has been developed like glycosides sugars and derivatives from polysaccharides the process of glycolysis the pathway then uh, from the shikmic acid different aromatic acids are also been developed and the pyruvate pathway there are different uh, peptides at the end the different alkaloids has been formed from the tca cycle as a shikmic acid pathway end products like we are going to develop or we are going to uh, derive some substances and part of it as actually from the acetyl coa we can also see the mevalonic acid been generated from the mevalonic acid the end products as a secondary metabolites are formed steroids and isoprenoids just to have a look don't bother about the shikmic acid pathway and you need not write anything just uh, if you are good in chemistry and also the um, amino acid pathways and if you are able to go I mean, follow clearly you will be able to pick up the process of in the development of certain amino acids what are the by products has been generated that may that is also mainly through the shikmic acid pathway okay so just only the end products you need to focus that's it so in the page 27 not to confuse much and not to make uh, worry much it is in the page 7 you can 27 you can clearly see different types of amino acids are going to make different kinds of chemical substances and what are the plant source so a list of things has been given phenylalanine is a very important amino acid right so from the phenylalanine different types of alkaloids have been generated okay so the alkaloids kind of hyoscyamine ephedrine mescaline and emetine and colchicine these are the different types of amino sorry alkaloids have been generated from the amino acid called phenylalanine very common amino acid in fact phenylalanine so from this amino acid the different types of alkaloids like hyoscyamine that is hyoscyamine niger from solanaceae and ephedrine at least some of you must have remembered the name of the plant <laughs> called ephedra a gymnosperm plant right a herbaceous gymnosperm ephedra a very important medicinal plant also yeah it is much cultivated in uh, china two important medicinal gymnosperms has been cultivated in china one is ephedra and the other one is uh, ginkgo okay so that is ephedrine then emetin is ipecac is one plant uh, called uh, ipecac uh which yields emetin and the last one is colchicine hello colchicum atom male yeah very good the good so the source of uh, colchicine is colchicum atom male a lac member just like our onion so uh, these are all different types of alkaloids we are going to obtain from the source of amino acid called phenylalanine so calcin is a kind of substance do, do anyone know the uh, importance of calcin double the number of chromosomes second is good good parvin so calcin is a substance we obtain from the uh, roots of this uh, bulbs of the calcium atom nail uh, it is a carcinogenic substance it is also used in the treatment of uh, cancer as well uh because when the malignant tumors are growing very fast uh it arrests the division to some extent so that's how it is used in the cancer treatment but basically it is also a carcinogenic it can cause carcinogen mutations and uh, carcinogenic as well so as uh, parvin rightly told it is uh, used to to uh, develop polyploids the effect of the colchicine is such that 
we all uh, studied the cell divisions the doubling of the chromosomes happen in all the cell divisions all means mitosis and meiosis doubling of the chromosomes need to happen then they divide and distributed to the daughter cells is it not so how the chromosomes has been distributed any idea in the cell divisions Mara? in the cell divisions chromosomes from the chromatin reticulum distinct number of chromosomes according to species will be formed they double and uh, the daughter chromosomes need to distrib I mean, get separated and uh, in, uh, need to reach the poles and all then they form a two sets and uh, daughter nuclei will be formed right that is this, in any cell division that is the end uh, of the things uh, are going to happen so what is the structure which is going to separate these uh, chromosomes spindle fiber yes yes nagrajer correct it is a spindle fibers so as all of us know uh, we draw the diagrams as well no like uh, it is a spindle fiber so the spindle fibers are going to attach to the centromere and they pull the chromosomes to the poles that's how the two sets of chromosomes get separated so here the calcisin activity is that it inhibits the formation of spindle fibers so when there is no spindle fiber doubling of the chromosomes happen they will be there in the cell just like that without separation that's what parvin told doubling of the chromosomes so it is not going to make the doubling of the chromosome as such it will not allow the separation of the chromosomes by mm, yes yeah right so by inhibiting the formation of the spindle fibers it inhibits the formation of in whatever the chromosomes are been formed they remain together so that's how the calcin is used to develop polyploids it is used in plant breeding to develop polyploids um, which is most of the our cultivated plants are not i mean that it is uh, generated through calcin but that is, polyploids can be generated by using calcin okay so just uh, to remember calcin i am adding all these uh, additional things okay then uh, another uh, amino acid which is also very common amino acid called tyrosine so this tyrosine um, is also going to make alkaloids of course so the alkaloids of uh, papaverin that is from papaverus omniferum and codeine codeine is also kind of narcotic substance uh, found in um, papaver and also um, another plant called hemlock i heard the word hemlock okay you must uh, all of you must have heard uh, the name of socrates a great philosopher Yes, so he was uh, forced to drink a poison right because he was questioned the ruler uh, yes. so instead of killing him they forced him to take the poison so that poison is hemlock okay it is a uh, any apsc member so it's a highly poisonous substance so that is uh, so that plant is also a source of uh, codeine Okay, it will be there in the papaver somniferum and mostly it is uh, found in the uh, hemlock plant then of course morphine so papaverin codeine and morphine all are very effective alkaloids are derived from the amino acid called tyrosine similarly indole alkaloid so tryptophan is an one important amino acid uh, which is going to develop indole alkaloids then ergot alkaloid and quinoline alkaloids as well you, you can just see the list strychnine serpentine and reserpine which are uh, of course serpentine and reserpine are the so uh, derived from raulfia and strychnine from strychnas which are uh, called as indole alkaloids it will have an indole group that's why they are called as indole alkaloids similarly lysergic acid is uh, extracted from uh, ergot ergot is a disease right it is a fungal disease uh, seen in uh, sorghum and also in the uh, hmm. palmillet basra 
so that fungal member is going to extract a kind of uh, ergotin and uh, oxytocin is also a hormone kind of thing extracted from that plant so it is a disease fungal disease is going to give some uh, important medicinal uh, substance okay that is ergot alkaloid then uh, quinine of course we know it is uh, from the cinchona bark and the vincoside mm. from the vinca plant so these are quinoline alkaloid so from tryptophan there are several different types of alkaloids have been uh, derived so similarly est estel coe we we know the presence of estel coe uh, coenzyme uh, in the krebs cycle and all so it is going to develop different uh, steroids at the end product so not directly from estel coe we are going to have all these things but in the um, generation of different monotypoids and uh, steroids and triterpenoids are been isolated so just have an idea that's it nothing uh, don't worry like you are going you need to write all these things just to have an idea how the different types of amino acids are also going to generate the different types of substances as uh, the unique substances we observe in important medicinal plants okay then also uh, just one thing has been uh, added here nothing really related to the phytochemistry uh, one of the aspect as it is given in the page 28 that is chemodemes are chemical races just uh, an additional uh, information to you nothing directly related to the phytochemicals here there are some plants which uh, mean plants means the within the species we know what is a species right species is a population with the similar characters and also having the inbreeding capability that is called a species so that means they will have all the characters same all but they they might show a slight variation in the chemical constants so the species which are having difference in their chemical constants they are called as chemodemes so that means there is no phenotypic variation so not even genetic variation but it is the beginning to develop a new species okay so it is going to be uh, change further if the chemical uh, differences are going to be little bit more to the extent can uh, bring the changes in the genotype then it will be reflected in the phenotype also so that is the beginning to make the process uh, of a new species so uh, all the time one point uh, always you need to remember species are going to extinct and at the same time species are going to be added new species always get generated in the process like this a slight variation starts at the minimum level of slight difference in their chemical structure or chemical characters then it will proceed to the extent of changing very slowly to the genetical level and also to the phenotypic level so that's how the new species are being added so that is just to know that chemodemes they are so several chemical races are chemodemes are reported in digitalis purpurea and also digitalis lanata okay that is one thing digitalis plant digitalis purpurea is the major important plant of course digitalis lanata in both these two uh, chemodemes has been identified similarly uh, cinnamomum jailanicum that is uh, dalcini dalcini yeah so you can see here uh, another plant also given cinnamomum camphora all of us know camphor yes in the pandemic time camphor is also much used and it is a disinfectant in fact why camphor is used in the rituals is we lit the camphor no and uh, uh, more often we try to just uh, take uh, touch of that uh, camphor uh, flames or fumes because it is a disinfectant but all the time we do while closing the eyes we are supposed to open the eyes and so that it's uh, close to our eyes being it's a disinfectant but uh, it became so ritual like we close our eyes and do this while uh, 
using the camphor lifting the camphor so camphor is actually derived from cinnamon camphora wood so bark is used in cinnamon zeylanicum that is the spice dalchini so another species of cinnamon that is cinnamon camphora has camphor glands in its wood so by distillation of that wood we will get that camphor which is a very unique smell it has okay and uh, another uh, member of cinnamon is cinnamon tamala that is bay leaf biryani akanta kada okay huh. yeah that that bay leaf is cinnamon tamala so it is a quite interesting different species of the same genera having uh, different parts of their plant having the aromatic uh, components and also different medicinal purposes in one plant it is the bark is the source cinnamon jailanica in cinnamon tamala the leaf will have that property and in the cinnamon camphora the wood will have that property right and uh, different aroma and different properties they have different components also okay so uh, here this is uh, just to have an idea how it will be and similarly asimum asimum sanctum all of us know but there are different uh, species of asimum as they are already made as a species but there are many chemical deems are also been identified in asimum sanctum itself actually asimum will is having nearly 32 different species with different aroma and within the asimum sanctum or tenuifolium will be uh, is showing several chemodeems as well and eucalyptus also has different uh, that chemodeems has been reported in eucalyptus as well so uh, which is more obvious when they are uh, aromatic plants we can differentiate uh, a little bit of it okay so the next aspect is given like importance of phytochemicals in modern medicine so this can be an essay question to you so you need to give what are just a brief introduction of what is phytochemicals and what is its importance because ultimately these phytochemicals are responsible for the medicinal property of that particular drug or plant okay so here the important aspects has been given like for the phytochemicals so here it is four things has been very clearly given in the page 29 just follow chemical molecules formulate the molecular basis of therapeutic property crude drug or purified uh, phytomedicine hence they are called phytopharmaceuticals because these are the substances responsible for the medicinal property of the drug and uh, they can be used as a model for the preparation of another the same kind of drug that's how actually synthetic drugs are been made so even though we told in allopathy medicine only synthetic drugs are uh, used it doesn't mean that they just imagined something and they created like that they are all based on the plant molecules structure only because of their uh, non availability or expensiveness or uh, shortage uh, um, to every place and all other reasons why they just taken the molecule structure molecular structure of that chemical substance and they made it as a product in the industry as a synthetic substance wise not from the plant they they could generate the same molecule in the laboratory and later in the industry that's how they are uh, called as synthetic but basis is always the plant the molecule only so like that the phytochemicals are going to make the model for the making of new drugs so that's what actually been explained here then chemical constants serve as biodynamic compounds because they are all uh, get to change they are able to change so they are not static thing like uh, Uh, without any alteration okay so th uh, they are uh, been made uh, for the change so they are always called as biodynamic molecules first thing we called we call it as they are phytopharmaceuticals and second uh, word we are using it as biodynamic compounds because they can be altered then phytochemicals serve as chemical models or templates for design and total synthesis of new drug uh, entities so for the development of new drugs also these are the models and we can add something or delete something to make a new product so that's how 
they are also helping in the development of new drugs as well okay so here a list of things are been given the basic chemical group and the, what chemical substance has been made out of it okay so the first one is called atropine that is belladonna so they just made anti cholinergic means anti uh, fever like substances from that and quinine it is also anti malarial okay just for fever anti malarial and the phytostigmine is anti cholinergic this is also like uh, for the fever and also for the treatment of the um, digestive system colon like other things so then opiates morphine and codeine they are used uh, to develop local anesthetic anesthetics like or sedatives then salicylic salicylic acid we told in the first itself so they are made to develop aspirin so some of the products are made based on a plant product so phytochemicals have been identified for the treatment of cancer and also for the treatment of alzheimers and anthrax which are very threatening diseases as well so um, the phytochemicals of commercial significance they have given lot of a uh, list of things so 14 points has given in the page 30 go through thoroughly these all these points of 30, 14 points here mentioned phytochemicals of commercial significance each plant has been mentioned again on the same name earlier we have seen the list of things glycosides which are found in uh, senna like that so here it is anthracene glycosides more specifically given as found in cassia that is sonamukhi uh, then uh, these senocytes are extracted for the and uh, made stable by adding calcium salts so here the leaves and the pods are the source for these senocytes which are uh, laxatives similarly caffeine is extracted from tea so just directly they are giving the source okay so the caffeine is extracted from tea or tea waste and also usually we think caffeine is a a product of coffee right but more amount is actually found in tea than coffee caffeine is more found in uh, tea and later on in nicotiana tobacco that is uh, tobacco than coffee okay so strychnine is extracted from the strychnos nexovamica seeds and uh, antipertensive sir tranquilizing agents are extracted from raulfia serpentina that is sarpaganda sarpaganda is a source for uh, anti hypertensive drug as well as tranquilizer sedative both the drugs are been uh, extracted from raulfia then vinca is another plant vinca is uh, vinca rosea or catranthus rosea is a very common uh, ornamental as well as weed plant periwinkle sada bahar it is called bilaganeru in telugu is a very important medicinal plant so because of its importance because it contains two indole alkaloids called vincristin and vinblastin they are used to treat the uh, leukemia disease in uh, infants and also for the breast cancer and uterine cancer also for different cancers in particular for the leukemia in children it is much effective drug so that is uh, the why uh, actually the plant picture has been given on the cover page the plant picture which is seen on your cover page that is vinca rosea or catranthus roseus which is a good source of vincristin and vinblastin for the <coughs> then uh, commercial tropin alkaloids are extracted from atropa and datura so uh, just a list of thing different plants are been mentioned here up to 14 just go through once and in the last you can also see again a repetition of what phytochemicals are and what is the source and what is the use so artemisin is the substance extracted from artemisia that is called machipatri and astrace member as an anti malarial drug so all of us know quinine is a drug used to treat from the cinchona bark is used to treat malaria but as a malarial parasite developed resistance to quinine now we are also using artemisin as an effective controlling drug to treat malaria artemisin from artemisia 
so in future we need to search for another drug to treat malaria <clears throat> next is force choline this is uh, <clears throat> extracted from coleus force coli as an anti hypertensive drug just like our uh, raulfia then uh, it is uh, argon sulfur compounds are been extracted from the uh, onion that is uh, allium sepa or allium sativa members both garlic and onion are good source of these substances so which are mainly used as a cardiovascular agents all of us know onion and garlic are very good for uh, heart they are very good heart cardiovascular agents they are and another one is uh, given as gukulipits that is from camphora mukul a very indigenous drug it is it is now uh, is going to be used in allopathy medicine as well to treat uh, diabetic condition as well as for the obesity uh yeah that is uh, anti arthritic like it is given and vasicin this is from adathoda vasika in telugu it is called addasaramu so this is vasicin is uh, actually given as an oxidative agent here but actually it is an uh, uh, expectorant in all our cough syrups of allopathy medicinal system is using this uh, uh, vasicin extracted from uh, adathoda vasika so some plant products are uh, used in uh, allopathy medicinal preparations as well there are several in fact but uh, uh, more popular is this vasicin and uh, reserpin is one substance isolated from raulfia is used without any alteration as it is it is used as an hypertens anti hypertensive drug in allopathy medicine as well and in the last it is given taxol uh extract from taxus bacchetta as an anti cancerous agent so you have to combine all the aspects what are given in this unit whether it is asked as a phytochemicals or use of phytochemicals in medicine or role of plants in medicine whatever the way it is has been asked you need to give the same answer okay so here as i already told phytochemicals is a very important question short question you are going to get so most of the times i have seen this as a first question phytochemicals it can be a short question then you can just briefly tell that uh, these are the chemical substances from the plants and of different categories and uh, it can be just brief but it is a very important short question and then um, the second question essay questions lo um, role of phytochemicals in modern medicine and write uh, an essay on phytopharmaceuticals okay so second and third questions you can consider it as an important essay questions as well so one short question and two essay questions are important from this unit okay i, I hope uh, we can end this session it's already 140 uh next week also you have to join the same way like uh, at 10:30 in the link of uh, fifth paper and from 12 onwards you have to use the link of uh, link given for the sixth paper okay as it has been recorded and uh, going on on uh, live on uh, youtube you need to use the both the links so in the beginning fifth uh, paper link and uh, from 12 o'clock onwards we have to use sixth paper link okay so in the next uh, session we'll discuss about uh, the information of certain medicinal plants we'll uh, discuss about unit 3 is it okay okay ma'am thank you okay ma'am okay ma'am yeah. madam yeah, if you have any doubts you can uh, post or you can just uh, yeah one thing uh, in the evening just have a look about uh, uh, of the unit 1 and 2 then in the next session if you have any doubt to get clarified you can ask in the beginning then i'll clarify and continue the class later okay, okay ma'am yeah thank you ma'am okay ma'am see you in the next week thank you ma'am thank you ma'am